All right, so it's Linda Winter with another Winter Designs project. Today, we're gonna to be doing my layer cakes. Now, layer cake card case. This guy here makes one out of one layer cake. Y'all know layer cakes. Layer cakes are those 10 inch uh, pieces that are already cut for you. They're called pre-cuts and you have a stack of 10 inch pieces of fabric, 10 inch square. So layer cake friendly, this is the layer cake card case. This is the large and it makes these guys here. We'll take a closer look in a minute. This is the small and I love the small as a gift card. Let me show you what you do with this. Imagine this is a layer cake and I shouldn't say imagine, this is a layer cake, but I've gone ahead and ironed on a fusible. We'll talk about what kind of fusible to use and what not to use. But when I place this on, I'm gonna place this so it goes right along the corners. So you can see right here, this guy, this edge, this edge, I wanna make sure it's lined up right to that edge. And when I go to cut and to cut and to cut, I still have room to make one more. Now I need two pieces. Let me show you this little guy here. This is my small layer cake, and I said I love having these for gift cards. Notice I have a different fabric here. So we'll have one layer cake for the outside and one layer cake for the inside. But this is a perfect size for a gift card, for your credit cards, for your driver's license. If you wanted to add a little you know, lanyard or a little something on it, I'll show you some of those options a little bit as we go. So something like this with a swivel hook you can do. This can go on a backpack. This can go on your belt loop on your purse you know to dangle whatever it is but the reason why I called it the layer cake card case is that it holds cards of course but it's made from layer cakes you can make these from scraps too so little scraps of fabric that you have this is a great scrap buster so I want to go ahead and cut we're going to use the Martelli rotary cutter of course I have the left-handed one because I'm a lefty so we want to cut not a lot further past so if you have to go back and cut a little bit more do you see right there, I need to cut a little bit more, then go ahead and do that. We don't want to cut into because this area is going to be for the next one. All right, so I've cut that one side and now we're going to turn. Our templates have the no slip material on the back, so every cut that I get is going to be exactly the same. I've cut out one. I'm going to go ahead and place this on the other side. And when I place this down here, line that up on those edges. And as long as your layer cakes are really 10 inches, you know, sometimes they're not. So I'm going to line up to this edge right here. And when I go to cut, I'm going to trim up those edges. So this is what I'm using because this and this might not be exactly accurate when you go, to when you go ahead with those layer cakes that you get. Sometimes layer cakes, you get them and they're not all perfect. So that's what's so great about these. So what have we done out of one? one layer cake, we get two pieces. Now, this would be if you were gonna use the same for the lining and the outside. I don't wanna do that. What I'm gonna do is show you how to make the large and everything I do will be exactly the same for the small, except for this has a fusible on the back side. When you use a fusible, I wanna talk fusibles for just a minute. This is something I love for a lot of my projects. This is Pellon's Deco, Decor Bond but this is too heavy for this project. When you go to turn, you need something like this to be easily turned. I don't know if you can tell, but this is really stiff. I did one layer of this decor bond, which is not that heavy, and then one layer of what I really like. This is Pellon, and this is the Shape Flex. Pellon, it's shape, shape Flex, and they call it SF101. SF101 is a more lightweight fusible, and it really is great for so many projects. So this is what I've ironed onto here. When you do the little guys, I like to just have one piece, one piece have this Pellon, and the other piece have nothing. That way, when you go to sew these and you turn them, you don't have too much bulk. This otherwise becomes too stiff, and when you go to turn, it gives too much definition where you don't want. See how that has a little bit of a curve to it? I used both of these on here, and it just tightens up in the middle there, and that's just too much. So on one piece of fabric for the small, use the SF101, and on the other piece of fabric, don't use anything. So it would be these two pieces, if I were gonna be making this, a piece of fabric, 
a piece of fabric with the SF-101. So that's what I recommend for the small. Everything else is pretty much what I'm going to be doing for the large size. I'm going to get this out of the way. And by the way, it's called small and large, but I'm hoping to come up with a larger one than this because I want one that will put your cell phone in, that will hold your cell phone. So this guy here is just not big enough. This guy here is just not big enough for my cell phone. So I want to make one a little bit larger. This fits on a layer cake. The next size up won't fit on a layer cake, but who cares? Because you've got lots of fabric choices out there, lots of scraps that are a little bit larger. So stay tuned for that. I'm not sure what I'm going to call that one. All right, so there are fabrics to use and fabrics not to use. Don't use uh, one directional fabric. Why? Because this is great here, but when you fold that down, those doggies would be going upside down. Now, if you like that look, go right ahead, but directional fabrics you want to stay away from. I'm going to do one for dog treats. So I've gone ahead and cut one, and again, this has the SF-101. This has the SF-101. I just rough cut a piece from my template for the SF-101 because I don't want to waste any of it, and I've fused it on already. Follow your directions for fusing. I love using Bone Ash Fusible Sheet. I've got one over here somewhere, not in the camera, of course, but I have it on my website. I love it because when you're fusing, I don't have to worry about ruining my iron. All right, so you can see me fussy cutting this a little bit large and fusing that on. That leaves this extra fabric and it also doesn't waste any of the fusible. You decide how you want to do it. Again, we're going to cut. And here it doesn't matter so much about me cutting off because I'm not going to be doing anything extra with all of that. All right, so we've got two of these. I've got this one here. I've got this one here. What do we want to do? We're going to sew these at the sewing machine. We're going to sew all the way around the three sides. I'm going to flip this out. This is going to give you, and by the way, I have batting inside of here, a very thin batting. You can do batting, but you want to have something that doesn't give too much. One layer of batting is all you would want to do. If you're going to do batting, if you like the idea of something a little plush, one layer of batting on one side only. All right, so what I've done, I already mentioned, we sewed around one, two, three, four. I said three sides, four sides. So the sides and the tops. This right here is the side. If you notice, there's a finished seam here. There's a finished seam over here. We're going to have finished seams here. When we join the bottom, there's no finished seam. So we're going to use a serger or you can use a zigzag on your sewing machine to make that finished off. It doesn't matter that much because nobody's going to be peeking inside the bottom. Let me show you in here and looking all the way down in the bottom. The one that I want to make for the um, cell phone Phone, I think will also be a great an eyeglass case too, a sunglass case, but you could probably fit sunglasses in here right now. So you can see. I want you to peek in. Let's see if we can see inside of there. I don't know how to get. Can you see you don't notice that seam that it's not finished inside of there? Let's get my fingers out of the way. You don't even notice that it's not finished off. So we're okay with that. All right, so we're going to go to the sewing machine. We're going to sew, we're going to sew, we're going to sew, we're going to sew. Once we sew those, we're going to turn right sides out, give it a good press, and then we're basically going to be folding this way. We're going to stitch this guy and this guy together first. That's what gives us those finished seams inside. And once we stitch those together, these guys here, if I can get that to turn, these guys here, when I turn that right sides out, we're going to place those down the center and we'll stitch that down. And then we'll turn right sides out. We're going to talk about finishings, all of those options. I'm not going to do any finishing now, but I am going to take a piece of this just to talk about it. Let's grab some scissors. I want you to see this is one option of closing off. And if you are going to use either an elastic, I love elastics. The elastic headbands, the elastic hair elastics, I love those because they stretch. I've got here a piece of leather, and I love the idea of doing the leather there. So you can see how that leather really just kind of adds something to it, the rustic look that you have with this button. So I'm going to take one and we'll show when I would use this. I'm not really going to use it, but I'll give you an idea of that. So we're going to head over to the sewing machine and sew this together.
All right, a uh, quarter inch, three eighths inch, a scant three eighths, any of those that you feel comfortable with as far as seam allowances go will work. I'm gonna go ahead and add a clip on the side, a clip up at the top, and a clip up at the top as well. So we're adding clips here. We're gonna start sewing right down here and I've added my clips on each of those areas there. We're gonna start stitching here. And again, down at the bottom, in either side, whichever is good for you. And again, scant 3 8 cent seam allowance, a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna move my needle over a bit. And lock those stitches in, because we are gonna be turning here. Now you can pivot here if you want, or you can stitch off of the side, totally up to you. I'm gonna remove that clip. All right, now this is when we would use this guy here. This guy inside of here, if you wanted to use this, we would place this right inside here. I'm gonna fold that fabric back. I'm gonna make sure that it's inside, but not twisted around. Now on this project, since this is a little doggy bag, if this was a doggy bag for doggy treats, I probably would use one of the elastics. But what I wanna show you on this, you know what, let's do it anyway. Even though I don't really want this on here, imagine this is elastic. Okay, we're gonna stitch. I'm holding with my fingers. If you don't like holding with your fingers, take a straight pin and you would have pinned from one side to the other side. And I probably would be doing this, not at the sewing machine, but right here. So I'm pinning that in place, pinning that in place. I'm gonna use my fingers just to hold that in place because I feel like I have enough control with my fingers. And notice what I'm doing. I'm pushing with my fingernail right up there, right by it. All right, we're gonna stitch and then we're gonna back stitch. And we're gonna stitch and we're gonna back stitch. <laughs> Then we're gonna go ahead and stitch one more time and we'll position that. And I've stitched probably one stitch. Oh, no, that's pretty good. Okay, and we're gonna lock that in place. Back stitching a little bit here as well. Now, if you're not feeling comfortable about this, about the placement, stitch once, stitch around, don't back stitch, check for your placement. And if you're good with it, then go back and back stitch. Get rid of that clip. I'm gonna pivot, and in just a second, we're ready to turn. This is a really great assembly line project. This is a great gift to give. Again, the gift cards, if you know you're gonna be giving gift cards to everybody, then make a cute little card case, the Larry K card case holder in the small size for everybody, or it fits in the large size well as well too. Okay, so I've gone ahead and trimmed just a little bit off of the corners there, off of the top, off of the corner. Because I've got that leather inside of there, I might even wanna go in with my scissors and get a little bit of that out. I'm gonna turn and see how it looks and make any adjustments if I need to. Now, this is where you might wanna get a chopstick or you can just try your fingers, a pair of scissors, a nice big pair of scissors that you can push out. I'm gonna pull a little bit there and I'm pushing at the same time as I'm pulling. I'm gonna push that corner out. And the two layers of the SF-101 make this stiff. If you don't like the stiffness, if you want this to be soft, that's where you're gonna use one piece of batting instead. All right, so what do we do? We're gonna give this a little bit of a press. I'm gonna make sure that those seams are nice and finished. Make sure everything is nice and open. And when we get this done, we're gonna stitch those two sides up. You have to decide what you want for the outside fabric and what you want for the inside. Okay, 
Let's get that iron out of the way. Okay, so we've got this. Notice on this front, I've got a little bit of the white showing. That means I want to kind of push in and pull my fabric back a little bit. I'm pushing in with my fingernail and I'll give that another good press. We're not going to top stitch yet. And you don't even, with the SF-101, you don't even need to top stitch if you don't want to. For batting, let me show you the batting. I definitely want to top stitch because the batting is so soft and subtle, su supple that I do want to top stitch there. This SF-101 doesn't really require it. Okay, so do we like this look here? Imagine that that's done nicely. Do we like that side? I don't like it. Or do we like this side? I like this better. So we're going to make this the outside right here. So what we want to do is turn these with our two sides together, the black sides together. This is the top right here. This is our very top. This is the top though that's going to be showing. So we do want to start stitching there, not down here. This is going to be part of our seam allowance. We want these to line up here. If you want to have a clip right here just to hold everything in place. And notice too right here, I'd probably press a little bit more just to get those seams all the way open. I do find that if you take the time to press, <clears throat> taking the time to push that out and make it nice is worth it. All right, we're going to stitch this down. Back tacking big time here. Now we've got a lot of bulk in here. So you can do a narrower seam allowance. What I found is a wider seam allowance actually works a little bit better. On the smaller one, I'm going to use a narrower seam allowance for sure. When we get to the bottom, back tack here. All right, so let's take a look at what we've got. All right, so we've got this is the look that we want right here, and we're going to give this a little bit of a press. Can you see how right here, laying this flat, if I didn't have this wide enough seam allowance here, that wouldn't lay flat. That will make a difference. So we're going to go ahead and give this a little bit of a press, and all I want to do is just hold that seam allowance open a little bit. We're not yet looking at the left side and the right side. All I'm doing is just pressing that seam open some. We could have chosen not to put fusible along those edges as well. So that would have kind of lessened some of the bulk. But what we want to do now is look at this from here to here, from here to here. The other thing you can do too is when you bring this down, look to see if that's going to be centered because we want this centered with this. And the way we know if that's centered is we're looking at this amount here and this amount here. So having those two, let's see if I can get that so you can see it, having this amount and this amount the same. Let me show you where it's not correct. Do you see how I've got way more here than I have here? So that comes from this down here too. So I'm going to go ahead and put a clip just on one side because I want to press out a little bit of this that I just created. I put a fold in that um, uh, SF-101 basically is what I did. So I want to press that out. And again, I'm just pressing this down, that seam down a little bit because that seam is going to be inside there. I want to make sure that I catch that. Okay, you have a couple options. You can stitch along here and leave it as it is. Or you can stitch along, then do a zigzag and maybe do a zigzag again, or you can serge it. What would I do? I'd be using my serger at home. But I want to show you for all of you that don't have sergers on the sewing machine. I'm going to stitch, and then I'm going to set this machine to a zigzag, and then zigzag along the edge. I do want to change my seam allowance to a little bit narrower. And I'm going to move my needle over some. And back tack. And I'm looking at the bottom fabric, not so much the top. And as I stitch over, we're going to go back and stitch over that again. 
because I've got a lot of bulk there. So I'm just going to lift this up and turn in the opposite direction. I don't know if you guys have ever sewn from the other side, but we're going to go ahead and do that. You could back tack on that middle section if you think you're going to have a whole lot of heavy stuff in here. It's up to you. What I'm going to do is set the machine, though, at a zigzag. Test out, if you're not sure on your machine, go ahead and test that zigzag out first. Oh, and it's actually doing a decorative stitch, so. <laughs> All right, let's cut that. Cut all your threads. If you wanted to do another row of that stitching, you can. I'm gonna just go ahead and trim all of this up because this is gonna be turned inside and we won't really even be seeing that. But I don't want threads to get caught in my keys, in my glasses, in anything else. So we're basically done except for the closure. So I wanna talk about the closure because we've got lots of options. So I'm gonna get back over to the sewing machine or to the cutting table in just a second and let's talk closures. All right, we're gonna turn this right side out. Two layers of SF 101 give you stiffness. That's going to, in the long run, give you a more finished look, stability, all of that. But right now, it's going to feel kind of bulky. And I'm looking for my big scissors that I don't have around. So this, I'm just pushing out with my fingers. But a chopstick, a good pair of scissors, the longer scissors, whatever you have, knitting needle to push those corners out. All right, so let's talk about closures. I went ahead and did the leather. Again, on the project like this, and I'm gonna grab scissors, because I do wanna push out. All right, so on a project like this, I really would use one of the elastics like I use for my coffee cozies. They're the hair elastics that are round, and that elastic really does allow you to put more or less in here. So I'm pushing and pushing and pushing on my corners. And I really want to get those corners as sharp as possible. All right, so I would, of course, at the ironing board, press this a little bit, press those creases in. But let's take a look and see what it is that we've gotten. Okay, so this is what we have right now. All right, and this busy fabric is harder for you to see, but you get the idea. Right where my finger is is where I would put a button. So right inside of here with the elastic. So you've got lots of options. I would love to have a little doggy button to put on here, but you get the idea. So you can sew a button on by hand if you wanted to do that. So that's one option. The elastic, again, if you had the elastic, this would be stretchy and that would allow you to put more in here because it would stretch, you know, so you could put a whole lot more in it or have less in it, totally up to you. That look that we just did is this. So the same way that I attached this here, this guy here I would use for the elastics that you can get at the dollar stores. So, and I have them on my website too. So if you wanted to get some, you're welcome to get some of those too. That's one option, but another option is Velcro. Now, all my Velcro at home is either this stuff that's old, where it was the sticky back and the glue. See oh, how ugly that is? The glue got stuck on here, but now I can sew through it. But what it looks like is this, it's not so pretty. I have no black, no brown, no any other color than this or white. So if you use something like Velcro, the Velcro, you know, you'll sew it on. I like to sew the Velcro on. You can see the stitching right in here. And then I like to sew the button right on top of that so that the Velcro is not showing. Here, you cannot get into your sewing machine with this here and sew that on. So that makes it really tough. But if you were gonna close this further, see how cute that is? I mean, look at how adorable that is. If you wanted to close that further and you wanted to put a piece of Velcro down here, when we sew this together, let me grab that pink one, when we sew this together, before you sew this edge right here, you can open that up. You would have an opening right here, and you could put that Velcro on here. 
you could put a button on here, you could do whatever here from coming from the bottom. You have a little bit more room to come down, you know, here than it is to go down like that. Same thing with snaps. If you've got our snap, the camp snaps um, that Martelli sells, or you've got one at home, you know, you can use your snaps. These guys here, you can use the magnets, these guys here. But do that before you sew this down, before you're sewing that piece together. So you can go ahead and place. Surprisingly, your snap is not so much going to be up here as much as it is going to be down here. And with the cam snap, you can't get in all the way to here. You could get in here for a snap from the top, but you can't get down. But from the bottom, you can get up. So before you do your sewing, do your placement of whatever it is that you want. So you can use buttons, you can use the um, snaps. These are fancier snaps that have, you know, the little tool you can use with a hammer on there. These magnetic snaps I love using, so you can do those too. You can add the buttons, you can add the tassels. I love little tassels like this. That one I had on, where'd you go? This little guy here. Okay, you can add those. So you're sewing those by hand. And I had a button on here that fell off when I was moving this today, I guess. I've lost it. You can also attach things like this. You know, these are just, to me, really perfect for projects. You know, you're going to be attaching it right to here. And then you've got this that you can grab and go. So you're basically going to be putting just a little fixture right here. And those you get at the jewelry department um, in the craft section, you know, any of those, but look how cute that would be. And these come in all different sizes and shapes and all kinds of things. And I have a bunch of these on my website too. So if you love the idea of these, you know, to be able to clip this onto your backpack, your uh, belt loop, your wallet, your purse, whatever it is, these are great too. So play around with those. I'm gonna show you this one last thing, this guy here, these fixtures here, that guy there, you can use something like that. You can see how this one is flat and this is curved. A flatter one, this is wider than this is. Do you see how that's taking up this and making it a little bit um, puckered? So if you have a flat piece like that and then you can stitch right down on here. You can stitch these on the back side if you want. And again, they can be clipped on whatever it is that you want. So this is the layer cake card case. There's the large size, there's the small size. These are, again, scrap friendly. These are layer cake friendly, so you can make the large size here. Again, this can be closed down like that. You can even close it further if you want to. If you wanted to put a button down at the bottom, how cute would that be? Put a button all the way down at the bottom and then you don't have to worry about anything. So you can fold that over. You can have this all the way up if you wanted to do that as well. So you can see this one I pressed to be a little bit further down. This one I pressed to be a little bit further up. So you can see the two differences there. It's the same large card layer car, uh, case card case these guys here. It's just the placement that you make with this. So these guys are great for, again, all those little gifts, all the little treats, all the gift cards, your credit cards, your driver's license, whatever it is you want to do. But they are whipped up super fast, super easy. You can find these templates by themselves or as a bundle at winterdesigns.com. Can't wait to see what you do. I know your fabric choices are gonna be amazing. Add all the little embellishments, have fun with this stuff. Add straps if you want to, go to town. How you use this will be totally up to you. You can put one inside of another. So, you know, have a good time. Actually, you can't put this one in here. You can put one inside of another like that. So have fun with this. Thanks for watching.